Cut earlier. Trust no. me, they cut it earlier. It wasn't this morning. It was. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't. No, no, it wasn't. Definitely. That's, no, that's been cut for a long time. Trust no, me. the grass. Oh, well, they did that for us, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> take the tape. You know the book. Take the tape. Oh, Don't. Is this going across the top of the book on the grave stone? Death's head, of course, and also. Oh, see the skull and crossbones there. Look, perhaps you guys can't see him from there. And legend has it that these are pirates' graves because the skull and crossbones, the Jolly Roger, was the you know the, the flag that they always ran up when the pirates were attacking a ship. And it, Absolute nonsense. No, that's true, they did. But the, this is just purely and simply uh, a sign that says when you look at it, death death will get you one day. You will see skull and crossbones on lots of 17th century, 1600s uh, graves. Because before, before the 1600s, you'll very seldom see gravestones that have got inscriptions on of any sort. Um, but after the 1600s, they did. But skull and crossbones were. Um, put on most of the, the best you'll ever see is if you go to Greyfriars Churchyard in Edinburgh. There's dozens of gravestones there with, with skull and crossbones on. But they say that they're pirates graves, but they're not. They're just purely I don't know who they are, I haven't got a clue. There's no names on them. They're very, very old, there's no doubt about it. But there is a fantastic story about um, pirates and there was a pirate um, that was that's not true. Forget the pirates. Let's talk about sailors because I've got that completely wrong. Then sailors, you'll find very, 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 very few sailors' graves because most sailors died at sea in accidents. And in 1820, the uh, the Whitby Gazette actually wrote an article saying that the, um, out of 16 sailors, at least 11 would die at sea, and their graves would never be found. Graves, their, their bodies, bodies would never be found, and the uh, situation was that the families would actually, if one, once the husband didn't come back, uh, after a period of time, a, a, a ceremony would be held here, even though there was no, no body, but any sailors that were buried here, legend has it, here we go again, that after they were buried, that a coach and four horses would come thundering up the coffin road that you saw alongside the steps and into the graveyard here pull up outside the original gate the, the original doorway of the church and ghostly guys in black cloaks and hoods would come out and stand around the grave there'd be headless coachmen on on the coach and the sailor that was buried would rise from the grave and be escorted by the four guys in, in cloaks and hoods into the coach. The coach would then turn and thunder down the coach road again to the bottom where we were standing at the bottom of the hill and turn right and go along that cobbled road and plunge off the edge of the thing into the water of the cliffs and they reckon it's because they were taking the sailor back to a fiery, to a fiery, to, to its, um, to its uh, watery grave. And again, I don't know, um, guys, I can't prove any of that because I think it's beyond proof. But why, why, number one, why would you have ghosts in a graveyard? I would say that we were talking earlier, Peter and I, we were talking earlier today to the, um, one of the church wardens here. And he says he comes here at five o'clock in the morning, summer or winter. He walks through here and it's the most peaceful, uh, beautiful place to be. And as I said to him, yeah, of course, ghosts are not to be feared. Because they were you and me once. We were, some, some of us, probably all of us, will end up as ghosts. And I think most of us are very nice, aren't we? 
<laughs> no, most people, most of us are. So as I've always said, that means that most ghosts are very nice, and that go ghosts are not there to get you. So as he said to us today, you know why? Why would I be frightened in, in a graveyard? Because if there are any ghosts, which which I don't, you see, I think the last place on earth to find a ghost is in a graveyard. Why? Because all that's in this graveyard is the vessel that once held that energy that was you. The ghost, for want of a better word. So, yeah, you know, why would I? But there are different, you know, first of all, if you were buried alive, as an awful lot of people would have been in those, certainly during the Black Death, um, because at the time of the Black Death, 1349, <coughs> one of the uh, symptoms of the Black Death was a coma, a long deep sleep before death, and then an even longer one um, <laughs> afterwards. And um, there are lots and lots of legends of people being buried alive um, in a coma. Because um, I mean, the, the moment you see, the moment you are dead or believed to be dead, um, you are out the house. You know, I mean, the the, the people fetching the bodies with the carts, you know, you'd have a red cross painted on your door and they'd be walking along shouting, bring out your dead, ringing a bell. And the, you see, they believed that the Black Death was a bit like Covid. <laughs> <laughs> that it was transmitted from one to another person. Which it wasn't, because it was black rats and fleas jumping from black rats and biting people and spreading this bubonic plague. So you didn't catch it by being next to someone that had got the bubonic plague, but they believed you did. So the moment you were dead, or believed dead, you were out of the house as quick as possible, and a grave dug as quick as possible. And I said, there are lots and lots of stories of people clawing their way out of the graves. Because once the soil was put on top of them, if they were only in a coma, sometimes the damp soil would, what a better word, refresh you, bring you around. And, and, you know, and there all of a sudden there's hands coming out of the grave, clawing their way out. Grandma climbing out, saying, hey, what's teeth? Yeah, uh, being buried, literally, being buried alive. And that happened a lot. Now, I can understand there being a ghost then, if you're, if you're suffocating, you know. I mean, it, it doesn't bear thinking about it, really, it doesn't. Um, and this has got nothing to do with here at all. But when, in one of my stories in Derby, uh, there's a, a, a plate pit in Derby, um, and it was a churchyard. And many years ago, a guy that I knew very well was uh, moving all the bodies out, digging them up, as they were, with, with a high man in those days, digging them out. And one of the digger, guys with a digger dug out this grave, this coffin intact from the, what was a plague pit. And he lifted it up onto the, onto the bucket of the high man, and it fell off. And it crashed and broke open, and the lid fell off. And they were gathering the bones together, putting them back. One of the, one of the guys turned the coffin lid round, and on the inside of the coffin lid were fingernail marks. And so it is, it's fact, it's real. And, and that is, and the other reason that there can be ghosts in graveyards is perhaps someone was murdered in the graveyard. Or perhaps a battle sometimes was fought over a graveyard. Then I can understand the graveyard being haunted. But not, not just the plain people being buried. I, I, I see no reason whatsoever. So why anybody should really fear walking through a graveyard, like I would. Um, I, I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, right, so we'll wander up. Look at, look at that. That's St Hilda's uh, Monastery.